Now we get an opportunity to test drive the ICOM R8600. So what can it do? Well, you'll notice we've got it perched on top of the IC7300 and it's similar. It's a slightly smaller footprint than its cousin here. And of course, the big difference is it's only a receiver. It's not a transceiver. But when you come to drive it, if you've used the 7300, you will find your way around quite a lot of the operation of this radio because there is quite a similarity. For a start, it's an SDR in a box. So we've got all the knobs and switches which have proved so popular with the 7300 that people like a radio that looks like a radio but has all the advantages of an SDR. And you can computer control this by connecting it up to some optional remote control software. I should point out though it's not the same remote control software as the 7300 so if you've got that already it's not going to work with this. So what is so special about this radio? Well for a start it is a receiver that goes from 10 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. So that is quite a range. And it's, I think, fair to say a superior SDR to the one in the 7300. So why is this such a special SDR receiver? Well, it is based on FPGA technology. So that's Field Programmable Gate Array, which is not easy to say. And that means that is doing most of the demodulation, the signal processing, the DSP. And for HF, the signals are sampled directly from HF into the AD converter, but for two different sections of VHF and UHF, so from 30 megahertz up to about 1100 megahertz, then it's down converted to an HF IF, which is then goes to the AD converter. And what that does is that means you get superior aliasing in your SDR and uh, image reception reduction as well. That's what it says in the specs, but what we always want to know as ham radio operators is how does it perform for us? How does it do the things we want it to do? And boy, can this do a lot, being as it covers from 10 kilohertz to three gigahertz, that is quite a range. So this is a good moment to, first of all, have a look at the back of the radio and look at the various connectors. Uh, we've got an end connector here for our VHF, UHF and above antennas. Uh, we've got another antenna socket here and you can easily switch on the front panel between the antenna sockets. So this one, uh, standard PL259 connector, so we could connect our HF antenna there. There's an RCA connector for an antenna as well, that's a 500 ohm antenna connection. So you can have a variety of receive antennas hung off the back of it. Uh, then we've got a 10.7 megahertz output here and we've got a, a reference, a 10 megahertz in and out reference frequency. Uh, IQ out here, which gives us the in-phase quadrature IQ data, comes out of there, extension speaker, well, does what it says. AF, IF jack, which gives us the demodulated audio signal out, or the 12 kilohertz IF out there. So there's a remote jack here, which will remotely control the receiver using the CIB commands. Uh, USB connector, well that's going to be the easiest way to remote it, is just to connect it straight into a computer via the um, USB socket here. Or there is, and this is an interesting departure compared with the 7300, uh, because if you wanted to run this with remote software, uh, you had to connect it into a computer that operated as a, as a server to run the whole thing off. Uh, this will connect directly into your router or your router, depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on. And then through that LAN port there, you'll get, uh, you can use that for automatic time synchronization and also it outputs the demodulated audio signal, or again, the 12 kilohertz IF signal to the network and also all the remote control using the software, which is uh, different to the 7300 software. It's, it's not the same. So you're gonna have to order some special remote control software for this one, but that would enable you to drive the radio from a completely remote location so you could be anywhere in the world and still listen to your radio at home or just be using it on a computer in the same room as you and remote controlling it that way and perhaps displaying the waterfall up on your computer screen. Uh, so a fairly comprehensive set of uh, sockets on the back here. Uh, there's a DC in socket here. That's because if I can heave into view here, whoa, there is uh, an optional speaker and power supply here. And uh, this one, just uh, you have the usual mains lead uh, that plugs in the back there. And then you can plug this into the external speaker socket. And uh, this one plugs into that DC socket there to provide a mains power supply. We've just got it plugged into the shack power supply, the 12 volt power supply using the red leads here. And uh, if you are going to use your built-in speaker and power supply, then you take that out and there is a, a, a replacement plug that goes in that socket there that sort of blocks that off so that it'll all work 
through the DC input socket there. All right, so what we need to do is connect some aerials to it, turn it round and see what it does. Right, we're powered up and we're running. So as with the 7300, this is an SDR in a box and we can interact with it through the knobs and switches on the front, but also using this touch screen. So at the moment we're displaying the waterfall here. That's quite a big chunk of spectrum it's showing us there. So a couple of ways we can tune. Here's our big tuning knob here. Uh, we can set uh, how coarse or fine we want to tune. If I put a tap over that one, then there we go. And if I want to tune more finely, I can tap on there. Well, that one makes excellent sense. If I want to input a particular frequency, we want to jump straight to. If you just touch the frequency display, up comes the keypad here. So uh, if we want to put ourselves in the middle of the 40 meter amateur band, so we can go 7.100, enter. There we are. Uh, and let's just turn it up so we can hear some audio coming from it. Now that's quite a chunk of spectrum we're showing there. So uh, one way you can tune a signal, if you see a signal you want to listen to, you can just touch it on the waterfall and then touch it again on the magnified version. As you see, we've jumped all the way up to nine megs there. So I think if we just want to look at one particular bit of the spectrum, we need to narrow it down a bit. So let's go back to the middle of 40 meters. Bonk. There we go, and uh, we've got the span control here. So if we touch span and then tap minus, we can change the span that we're looking at on the waterfall to something that's a bit more meaningful, giving us a bit more detail about the band that we're on. Uh, and the great thing with SDR, as we've said many times before, is not only can we can hear the signals, but we can see them here. So we see a signal pop up that looks like we want to give it a listen, and we can tap on it like that. And if we spot something that looks a bit more like a bit of sideband there, and we can fine tune it, of course, with the tuning knob. So there we are. We've got a, a signal on lower sideband, uh, and we're using the first filter. We have a choice of filters. Let me just turn this down a little bit, and we'll get on to what all these knobs do in a second. So to change the filter width, we can just tap on here, and we've got three preset filters, so we can step between those according to what we want. And if we would like to change the width of the filter, if you press filter and hold it, then this screen comes up and you can actually then um, adjust the width, BW. Uh, you press that and then you can adjust the width of the filter by using the main tuning knob here. So you've got quite a lot of control over your filtering and you've got all that from this display here. There are, of course, a lot of other controls that you're going to want to access on the front here. And here's an interesting thing. If you have a look at the front of the radio, you'll notice there isn't a knob that's labelled volume or a knob that's labelled squelch. And this is because these are called dial A, dial B and dial C, and that's because they're multifunction. And if you just turn that one up and down at the moment, it's doing the AF gain for us. But if I press it in, lo and behold, a bunch of other things turn up and then we can just tap the one we want to adjust. So by tapping on that, I can now turn the treble up and down on my audio or the bass, or the RF gain, or the squelch. So um, if I turn that up, we're gonna squelch that signal out. We don't need any squelch in the middle of 40 meters at the moment. And likewise, if we press dial C over here, we've got various other adjustments here that we can make, and the same on dial A. And we can, and it starts to get a bit complicated then, uh, but we can allocate different things to those buttons as well so that we can set it up how it's convenient to us. Uh, we have, of course, got a row of buttons along the bottom here. So the menu here offers us um, some of the more advanced modes or advanced settings. So, for example, going into particular settings uh, of connectors, of notch filters, um, connectors for external things such as computers for digital decoding, how that's going to work, or the settings for remote control. Uh, so all those more advanced settings are accessible through that. We can also change the size of the display, the digital display at the top here, in relation to the waterfall uh, by tapping on this, expand and set. So there we are, I've got smaller numbers and more waterfall, which makes it easier for me to see what signals we've got going on here. Um, I particularly like on this, and actually on the 7300 it's very effective as well, and that is the uh, noise reduction. When you've got a really high, crackly, staticky noise level, um, putting that noise reduction in really drops down the background noise, and that's all of course done in the DSP, and you've got a very effective noise blanker against pulsed noise as well. 
It's quite special to have a radio that goes from 10 kilohertz all the way up to 3 gigahertz. So what happens when we go to the VHF, UHF section? Well, there we tend to want to do scanning. We do do some manual tuning around. But what I've done is I've programmed in quite a lot of frequencies that I like to listen to. So if I switch to the memory, uh, we can see, first of all, there's a button here that says group uh, up and down. And uh, what you can do is arrange your channel memories into groups and label them so that they mean something to you. So I've got one there that says PMR, which is the uh, free to use uh, 446 radios, marine, self-explanatory, um, 70 centimeters and two. So I've got the frequencies in that I listen to there or air band. Um, and when you've preset all your frequencies, then it's very easy to scan. If I just hit scan there, I'm gonna do um, a memory scan. So just look at the speed, it's whizzing through all those channels and changing the modes and the filters according to what I put in the memory, because it will remember all those parameters. So if I want to add a channel, let's for example, put in a satellite downlink. I have to decide which group it's gonna be in first of all. So I'm gonna choose one of my groups. I'm gonna put it in my airband group for the minute because that's what I've got set up for demonstration purposes. But I expect we'd probably create a whole group called satellite and we'd put all those downlink frequencies in it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take it back into VFO mode and then I'm going to put in the frequency I want. So we're going to be in FM and I'm going to put in uh, 145960 and it's in FM. To add that as a memory, all I need to do is touch the memory write button, MW. And it gives me the option, and this is the great thing I liked about this radio when I was programming all my frequencies in, is it helps you not to screw it up because it is asking me, do you want to write this to a new channel? Do you want to write it to the selected channel? Uh, or do you want to select the channel and write it? Uh, so I'll just, because I'm adding it on the end of my list, I'll just put write to a new channel, boff, and it is done. So it's put that frequency in and it's added it to um, the frequencies that I've got programmed in in that group. And if I just press VM, it takes us back into the memory and then I can step through it and there it is being added on the end. So it's really easy to add your frequencies and then you can name them as well. So you can give them uh, tags that mean something when you see them. So some things you might want to label, not just as a frequency, but you want to know what it actually is you're listening to and you can arrange them all in the groups that you want, as I've said. And in total, you've got some 2000 memories. So that's quite a lot to play with. And as I said, the scan speed is pretty impressive. By the way, when you're scanning, you can decide what you want to scan by um, selecting either a group here. So if we select, uh, if I just wanted to scan, for example, the marine channels, I've selected the marine group. Uh, so I was stepping up and down with group. That's my marine group of uh, channels there. And then before I hit start, I'm going to press select. And with the main dial, I can switch between all or that group that I'd selected three. So now if I hit start, it's just going to scan the marine channels that I programmed in and it does it pretty darn quick. Or if I wanted to scan everything that I've put in my memories, then uh, I can go select and just turn that to all and hit start. Now it's whizzing through the lot. Oh, found something already. So it's picked up a local repeater straight away. Now, another thing that's built in to this radio is digital decoding. Now, uh, if we go, as you remember, we tap on the mode and it brings up all the various modes. We've got one here called digital. And if we tap on that, we get our first digital option, which is NXDN or DCR or D-Star or P25 or DPMR. Uh, so really, I suppose if I were to say there was one thing I'd like to have been on there would have been to easily hear DMR, but of course that's swearing a bit when you've got an ICOM radio here. So obviously it does D-star. Um, but if you do want to decode other modes that aren't available here, remember from the back, we had got those very useful outputs. So we've got an IF output, um, we've got audio outputs that we can all send out to an external processor and a computer or other decoder and decode other digital modes that way. So you've still got that flexibility. And also um, you see it's flashing between the two here and that's because it would auto detect the way it is at the moment, whether it was uh, a digital signal or an FM signal and it would behave accordingly. 
So here we are back in the 40 meter amateur band again, we're down the CWN just to explore other signals we might want to monitor with this fantastic radio. So let's listen to some CW first of all, we've got some strong CW signals coming in here. So that's great, but what about if we want to use other digital modes such as RTTY? Well, interestingly, you can decode RTTY on board by selecting FSK, then you go into the menu and hit decode and a little decode screen. Uh, will turn up here. It would if we were tuned to an RTTY signal. Uh, of course, it's not having a lot of success trying to decode CW. So what about other modes that we might want to decode? Well, um, how about going off to have a listen to some PSK? So if we go to 14070, now we can't decode that on board, I'm afraid. Uh, but what we can do, as we explained earlier on, is really easily connect this to an external computer because it's got a USB socket on the back. So what we did when we plugged in the antenna cables, we also connected the USB socket from here to our MacBook and uh, it just took about nine seconds to set up. Literally went into FL Digi and just selected this as the USB sound card is what it came up on the uh, list of audio inputs uh, and decoding away nicely there. Echo Alpha 3 Alpha Yankee Quebec is calling CQ on FL Digi. There we are then, quite a receiver, and uh, I think we've only just scratched the surface today in this whistle stop tour. There's so many other things that we could have gone on about for hours more, we could have shown you all the functions. So things like the fact that it'll do descrambling in DPMR mode, as long as you know the encryption key, uh, all the DCS and tone squelch, uh, the fact that there's an SD card slot on the front here, uh, so you can record audio, you can take shots of the screen, uh, which you can share, uh, you can also, download the whole profile of the radio onto the SD card so it's all set up how you love it. You could share that with somebody else. But I have to say, it was relatively easy and speedy to program the channels manually on the radio. Not like some, I think it would be fair to say, of the Chinese handhelds where really you don't want to do it like that. You'd only do it with a computer. So straightforward to use, tremendously versatile radio, and I think, and to be honest, it's reflected in the price, this is a very high-end radio. But I think at the price that it's positioned at for the quality of general coverage receiver, and this is general coverage, 10 kilohertz to three gigs, in a box this size, the performance is amazing and it is a fantastic addition to any shack. If you are looking for a really versatile radio that covers the spectrum, then this is the radio for you. The ICR 8600.